When you visualize your data, you have to put your numbers into context. What is good and what is bad? Let's take this line chart over here, which shows the production amount over time. Well, I have no clue if this is good or bad, but maybe you know that when the production amount falls below 8,000, well, that's not good because then we cannot keep up with demand. And maybe if it goes over 9,500, then we have no place to store our products. What you can do is add a target area and highlight the outliers, which puts the numbers into context and makes this chart much more insightful. And I'm going to show you how you can set it up without using custom visuals. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. In this channel, I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's have a look how we can set up a line chart with a target area. Let's first create the line chart. However, I'm not going to choose a normal line chart. I'm gonna go for the line and stacked column chart. Let's first take our production volume and put it onto line values. Now I want to break it down over time. So I go to my date table, take the date hierarchy and put it onto the axis. And then we can expand down to the month level. Okay, now let's clean it up. Now let's first clean up the X axis. So we go here to format, X axis. And here we can turn off concatenate labels. And I also don't wanna show the title. Okay, now for the Y axis, we can also turn off the titles. So let's do that as well. And I kind of like it when it starts at zero, not at 7,000. Uh, so over here, let's scroll up and adjust the starting point to zero. But it doesn't do anything. Watch out because this is for the columns and I want to do it for the lines. So there's here a secondary and we have to say align the zeros. And now here we can also put the start to zero and then determine what the end point should be. So let's put it at 12,000, let's say. Okay, so now we can go here to shapes, then adjust the stroke width so that the line gets a little bit thicker. Also, let's show some markers and let's increase the marker size to seven. Okay, so now my line chart looks a little bit better and we can start creating the target area. Now for this, we need a few measures. Now let's first create a measure that returns the lower limit. Okay, so, I go here and add a new measure and let's call this one target area, lower limit. And here I just want to return a value. Now let's say that the value should be 8,000. And now we can do something similar for the height of the target area. So that's going to be my next measure. So I go over here, add another one. This one we can call target area height. And the height should be 1,500, let's say. Now we can take these two measures and add them to the column values. Okay, so I'm going to first drag the lower limit onto column values. And then I'm going to take the height of the target area and add it as a second measure. Now you see that both show up. However, keep in mind that we have here a primary axis on the left hand side, secondary axis on the right hand side, and they're not in sync yet. So I have to go to format first, Y axis. And then here, I also have to say that the primary axis on the left should go until 12,000. Okay, so that they're in sync. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is make the lower limit disappear. Okay, and the way that we can do that is by changing the color to the same color as the background color for a chart, which is white in this case. So I'm gonna go over here to data colors and make the target area lower limit white. And then for the height of the target area, that I'm going to show in light blue and the production volume I want to have in darker blue. Now let's make the area in the back a little bit lighter. So I go back and I just slide this a little bit more to the left like this. Okay, perfect. Now, of course, we still have gaps in between the bars. Now, to remove the gaps, we can go to the x-axis and then the inner padding, we just slide all the way to the left, you see the gaps are gone. Okay, so this is basically it. Now we just have to clean it up a little bit and highlight the outliers. Now, first of all, we don't want to show the legend anymore, so let's get rid of the legend. 
Then also, because there are white bars here, it overlaps with the grid lines. So I also want to remove the grid lines, which I can do by going to the Y axis and then scrolling down and then here, turn grid lines off. Now the secondary axis, I don't want to show anymore. So I'm going to turn that one off and I want to update the title. So I go here to the title and let's say that this is the production amount. Okay, let's change the font color to blue and let's increase the text size to 24. Now we're almost there. The next thing that we need to do is highlight those data points that are outside of the target area. Now, how can we do that? Well, we can just create another measure that checks if the value for the production amount is lower or higher than the target area. And if it is, then return the production amount. And otherwise, nothing. Now let's see how that works. I'm going to insert a new measure and let's call this one highlight outliers. And we can first start with a variable. This is going to be the lower limit for which we already have a measure. So we can just refer to the measure. Okay, so let's select it. Okay, now then the next variable is going to be my upper limit. Now for this, we do not have a measure. However, we can calculate it by taking the lower limit and then adding the height of the target area. And that gives us the upper limit. Now that we have this, we can have a variable that's going to contain our result. Now here we can check if our production volume is lower than our lower limit or volume is bigger than our upper limit. Well, then we want to return our volume amount. And otherwise nothing. So we just leave that second arg uh, third argument blank. Okay, so now that we have that, we want to return the result. Now let's take our new measure and add it to the line values. Now you see the correct data points are highlighted, but also the lines in between, which I don't like. I just want to highlight the data points themselves and I want to change the color. I don't like the color. All right, so let's do that first. So I'm going to go to data colors and let's make them red okay and now we can go here to shapes scroll down and here we can turn on customize the series where we want to say that we want to customize highlight outliers and here we can put the stroke width to zero Ta -da. okay so now we are only highlighting the data points outside of the uh, target area now the next thing that we can do is also add data labels. Okay, so we want to have data labels, but only for those outliers. Okay, so let's go to data labels. We have to turn it on first, but you see it adds data labels everywhere. Now, also here, you have the option to customize the series. And then first for the lower limit, we can turn it off. Then for the height, we can also turn it off. For the production volume itself, we turn it off. We only keep it for highlight outliers. Now we can also make the text on these labels red so that it matches the marker color. And there you go. Now this gives us a line chart with a target area in the background without using a custom visual. Of course, we need to check if our chart still looks good if we refresh our data. Now let's give this a try. I'm going to click on refresh. And there you go, still works and looks pretty good. Now, I hope that this little trick was helpful to you. Now, if you want to get more tricks like this one, then consider subscribing and I hope to see you in the next video.